welcome to our church service. It's Easter Sunday and we are celebrating that Christ our Saviour has risen. Um, before I go into my sermon, uh, I'm going to just hand over to Lydia who's going to go through the notices today. Good morning and um, welcome to our service here on Easter Sunday. It's so great to see you and normally we would start our service together by welcoming one another. So bear with me, we're going to try something new this morning. Um, we know how much some of you have been loving the interaction on the comments below this video and um, having the opportunity to talk or agree with what's being said. So we've stolen off of another church and we're making no claims that it's our idea um, to have a two minute mingle. We know that in our church we have a couple of members that love to go round and greet everyone first thing when they walk in the door on a Sunday. So we're going to try to do that virtually. So your challenge this morning and you will get a cream egg arrive at your door for whoever does it because it's Easter and we love chocolate um, is in a moment we're going to set a timer on the screen uh, for a two minute mingle. In those two minutes you need to see how many people from our congregation you can say hello to in the comments below. So you might say, hello Steve, or he has risen, Robert, or good morning, Lynn. You might say any of those names because they're all members of our church who we dearly love and we miss seeing physically. So let's try, try to say hello to them virtually. So here we go. Here's our timer and we're going to start it now. So two minute mingle. See how many people you can say hello to on the comments below in two minutes. Ready, steady, go. Hello Lydia. Hello Mark. Keep going. See how many people you can say hello to. Maybe an emoji wave. Maybe, maybe an emoji thumbs up. See how many you can say hello to and I will deliver a cream egg to your door. And if there's more in the household than just one, I might add a couple of extra in. And being a key worker, I can just flag it under. I'm going to pray for my parishioners, or I'm going to pray for my congregation, because I'm a pastor at least, so we can get around the social distance that way. And if I'm delivering the cream egg, you want to make sure that there's some cream eggs left anyway. Oh, this is going to be a long two minutes. Two minute mingle. Keep going, keep going. It's keep great. Going. You're doing great. You're doing great. Fantastic. I so bet Steve's leading at the moment. I bet he is. So if you're watching on YouTube, um, you can. there is a facility to chat, so you can say hello in the chat below. Or um, if you're watching us on Facebook, you can interact on the Facebook below. We've got about 55 seconds just under to go see how you go, um, see how many people you've managed to say hello to, and we'll go back through the comments later and see who's managed it. It's just a little bit of fun on our Easter Sunday here this morning, trying to interact with each other and say hello to one another. Wonderful. Because we're missing each other's faces. So this is the next best thing, is to have a little bit of fun together, a little challenge, and we can talk about it later when we fellowship together on Messenger in a moment after today's service. So we're under 20 seconds. See how many more you can type in. Hello, Denise. Hello, Alan. Keep going, keep going. Hello, Margaret. Who else can we do? Hello, David. Hello, oh, Karen. Oh, we're running out of... Hello, Hello Kesia. Pepper. Hello, Pepper. Hello, Phyllis. Oh, and Time's up. stop. Excellent. Well done, everyone. If you manage to get in there and get some names on the comments below, that's fantastic. And if we didn't name you um, and you're new... Um, to watching us here because we're Facebook Live and you've never actually been to our physical building. We welcome you also and hope you had a bit of fun there um, saying hello maybe to some people that you know from our church that maybe has encouraged you to come and watch us here this morning. It's great to see you and this is a fantastic Sunday. It's one of my favourite Sundays of the year. So in a sense, there's a sense of sadness that we can't be together celebrating that our Lord has risen. But it's great that we can do this together and um, 
be together virtually to celebrate because it's the most wonderful time of the year and I know we normally say that at Christmas but I believe it even more so for Easter because of what Easter stands for and what our Saviour did by paying the price for us upon that cross and three days later that he rose again and that's what we're here to celebrate here this morning so a few notices of what's going on this week at the storehouse because we're still running and we're still in full action um, even if it's not physically in the building although there is fantastic work going on in the building so I encourage you to take a look at some photos that are being shared how our building looks so different on the inside currently because we sort of met the need of our community and um, so if you also can take a look at Dorchester Community Kitchen um, you'll recognise the building that all of that is housed in because that's where we normally worship together and it's sort of turned into a food storehouse um, for our community which is fantastic um, so take a look at that and see what wonderful work's going on I know they're desperate for donations so if you have any spare food running around in your cupboard um, that you want to donate then just let us know and we can either arrange to come and get it from you um, and I don't know if it will be dropped off it yeah, also yeah. can be dropped off at church as well following all the um, procedures of social distancing um, also um, we are going to continue after today's service with our tea and coffee and fellowship with one another. Um, so that's after today's service. We know we said that we were going to move on to Zoom, um, but we feel not enough people have got their heads around loading it up and sorting it out. Um, and so we're going to do Messenger again for this morning. Um, so you need to go on to Facebook Messenger after this Facebook Live. Um, or YouTube live video and then um, we will be there to talk to you and fellowship together so grab a tea and coffee and then we'll be on that together but next week we are really hoping to move on to Zoom because it would be fantastic to see everyone's faces right, together um, and so you'll have the opportunity to see people that maybe you haven't seen before because they're not in your home group they're not in your group for fellowship so um, we really would like to, so we'd really encourage you, I know we are asking you to download another um, thing or get your head around something else, um, but we'd really encourage you to download Zoom um, and Mark is going to email you out again this week with a link to just download it and then he will add you to your contact, so don't worry about everything else, that as soon as you've downloaded it, we can tell that you've downloaded it and we can just add you to our contacts so we can contact everyone um, next Sunday, hopefully. Then we can see everyone together and it will be fantastic. Um, so that's next Sunday. In the coming week, um, we have some great stuff coming up as well again. And we are going to be on Monday meeting for prayer. Now there's a slight time difference because it's a bank holiday, so we're aware lots of people are off. People might be um, got plans in the evening. So we're going to um, go Facebook Live on Monday for our prayer meeting at midday. But of course, if you're not available at midday, then it's always on our Facebook page that you can catch up and engage in what um, we're praying about and what happened in, the, in that moment um, later on in the day. So please don't put pressure on yourself because we've changed the time. But it's just that we're aware it's a bank holiday. We're aware people have got other commitments. So 12 o'clock midday, we're going to go live um, for Facebook live prayer meeting on Monday. Time change of 12 o'clock. Wednesday and Thursday, our home groups on Messenger, and they've been going really well. And um, people have been interacting in a fantastic way. And so we continue, we'll continue with them on Wednesday and Thursday. And then we'll be back here again next Wednesday. I don't think there's anything else here to say. Be back here again next oh, Sunday. Oh, next Sunday. Let's be back next Sunday. Not Wednesday. Next Sunday. Um, so, if you have a prayer request today during the service um, or tomorrow when we meet together to pray and you'd like us to bring that... Um, during our prayer meeting tomorrow or we'd just like to pray as a church for you um, you have the opportunity to email us on our church um, prayer email which is prayer 
prayer.thestorehouse at gmail.com. So prayer.thestorehouse at gmail.com. Okay. It's fantastic to see you. And we're going to um, listen or sing a song of worship now together um, to remind us of what Christ did for us upon the cross, what he conquered by rising from the dead and coming back to life and defeating death. Turn to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross is full. living hope that we have 
in Jesus Christ. We've just sung that song together. And we do thank you, Lord Jesus, for the living hope that we have in you, Lord. You, Lord, made a way for us. We thank you for Friday, but Lord, we thank you, Lord, that today is Sunday, Lord. You have risen from the tomb, Lord. You are resurrected, Lord. You are alive and we worship you here this morning. Amen. Amen. Before I preach, I just want to share with you um, about what is going on in church. Lydia briefly touched on it in the notices. Um, but as of um, today, when I'm filming this, which is Thursday, which is Maundy Thursday, um, we have given 250 food parcels um, out um, in 13 days um, since we started working with other agencies, with other charities um, to form Dorchester Community Kitchen, which has been an incredible achievement. We were able to give every parcel today that went out an Easter egg um, to, to, to the families and to those who needed it. Um, and just as a way of us as a church loving the community and supporting at this time. Um, so if you can support, please do. Um, the church is posting lots of stuff online regarding um, giving food donations. Or if you can't give donations, if you can give money, then please um, give if you can that way. Um, as the church is continuing to, to pour out um, into the community, that would be fantastic. When it comes to giving, I just want to say, like I said last week, um, if you are trusting God to be your provider during this time, then the best way to do that and to show that is to give faithfully to um, the local church like the Bible tells us to. Um, I'm not going to bang on about it. I'm just going to ask you to be obedient to what the word of God says. If you can't give, then don't. If you feel led to give, then please do. Please be led by the, the Holy Spirit to do that. Um, but if you are um, looking after your families, if you're trying to um, tighten the belt in, then please um pray that God will give you wisdom, that you will be good stewards of what he has given you to do. And we are praying for you as a church. We're praying for your, for your businesses. We're praying for your work. We're praying for every situation you find yourself in. We're praying that God's hand will be upon you and you will know the blessings of God during this time in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I just want to um, again welcome you to our Sunday morning service. It is Easter Sunday and what a Sunday morning to join us in. Do you know, as a church, we have seen hundreds of people come in on our Facebook Live as I've been preaching or um, on our YouTube channel. Um, and if you go onto our YouTube channel, if you, um, it'll be in the link hopefully below. If you subscribe to our, our YouTube channel, um, you'll see already that there's over 30 messages that we've been preaching. But, you know, we set up um, preaching um, and recording our messages about eight months ago, nine months ago nearly. Um, just in, uh, just as a way of helping those who normally come to church to listen to our sermons. And the most views that we've had, and that would be me who's preached in the two video occasions, we've had just over 100 views. But you know, our message last week nearly hit 100 views within a couple of hours, which is incredible. So God is really using this tool to, to reach into people's lives. Um, and also on Facebook Live, we've had every video that's gone out on Facebook Live and there's been nearly 200 or over 200 people watching those videos. So we thank God for this, this means of being able to communicate with you. We, we love you. We want to see you again real soon. Um, and this week I, I've managed to go round and hand deliver um, a, an Easter card to all of the congregation. Um, and using social distancing, knock on the door, leave the card um, and just have a chat and, 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 and see people's face to face. Um, and that's been lovely to do that. And as your pastor, um, I wanted to do that because I want you to know that I'm here for you. I'm praying for you. I'm on the end of the phone um, if you need me um, or social media, whoever you want to contact me. But I'm here for you. I love you. And I'm, I'm, I'm praying that God will bring you through this time. I know the card came at the right time for a few people. And some of the messages we've had back, myself and Lydia, we really, really appreciate the really lovely messages we've had back. Just as we are sowing into you guys, as we love you, as we're praying for you. We're really believing that God will be with you during this time um, in Jesus' mighty name. So it's Easter Sunday and there's nothing else that you can preach on other than Jesus Christ being risen from the grave. So if you turn in your Bibles with me to John 20 and we're going to read from verses 1 to 18. Quite a big chunk of scripture, but you know what? It's always good to read God's word. We're going to read God's word now um, and believe that God is going to touch people's hearts. I'm going to pray before I read. Um, I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit would prepare our hearts 
that Holy Spirit would speak to our hearts, that Holy Spirit would open our hearts to hear the truth of Jesus Christ. If this is the first time you've ever watched me online, then I thank you for tuning in today. And I really believe that God has made a way and this is a divine appointment for you to hear the truth of God's word and the, the truth of who Jesus Christ is today. So please listen with intention. Please open your heart to what God has to say. So Father, I pray for every heart to be open now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you would move by your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that you are not confined to a building, but Lord Jesus, you are here, Lord, with me in my room, but Lord, you're with every single person watching right now, Lord. May they might be watching on their TVs, they might be watching on their iPads or their, their, their tablets or their, their smartphones, Lord, however they're watching, Lord, I pray that you would touch everyone's heart right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we take, Lord, authority over the enemy and Lord, we say, Lord, you have your way, rule and reign in these lives in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. John's Gospel, John 20, verses 1 to 18. Now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. Then she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went out, and the other disciple were going to the tomb. So they both ran together, and the other disciple outran Peter, and came to the tomb first. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloths lying there, yet he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him, and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen cloths lying there, and the handkerchief that had been around his head, not lying with the linen cloth, but folded together in a place by itself. And the other disciples who came to the tomb first went in also, and he saw and believed. For as yet they didn't know the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away to their own homes. But Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white sitting, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Then they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Now when she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, and to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. We praise God today that the tomb is empty. I've seen a great post this week um, on social media that the, the churches are empty and it says the churches are empty and the encouragement is underneath a picture of the tomb and it says so is the tomb. Do you know what? We can celebrate today Christ's victory. Christ's victory over death, over sin and over hell. We are celebrating our risen saviour because he is not dead, he is alive. I watched a video not so long ago. J. John the Evangelist was sharing um, in a TV studio about um, how we follow Jesus and talking about other key religious figures, key religious leaders. Jesus Christ is the only one who died and is resurrected and alive today. And he asked the question, he said, if you're going, walking down the road and you see a dead man lying on the floor, or you've got a man who is alive, who are you going to ask for directions? And he makes the point that Jesus Christ, the risen, the risen saviour, is the one that we need to ask for directions for our life because he has conquered death and he has the victory. In the scripture that I've just read in John's Gospel, Jesus makes his first appearance after the resurrection. But how can we believe this? 
We believe in many things that we can't see. You might be sceptical. You might have doubts and worries about what I've just said or what I've just read. But I need to ask you the question, if you're sceptical of what I've just said, have you ever seen the wind? Have you ever seen history? Have you ever seen your brain? We see the effects of the wind, but the wind is invisible. We have records of history, but it is by faith that we believe certain historical facts and the events that happened. Television, as I tell you behind me, but Wi-Fi, they're invisible. Those waves that transmit the data are invisible, but it's an antenna and a receiver that can detect their presence. Do you know the unregenerate man or woman has a receiver? However, that receiver, their spirit, is dead because of sin. Ephesians 2 verse 1. They need to be plugged into the life of God and then they will come alive and be aware of that invisible spiritual realm. Ephesians 2 verse 1 says, And you he made alive who were dead in your trespasses and sins. Do you know my prayer this morning is that if you're watching me and you don't know Jesus, then today you'll switch on your receiver. Your spirit will come alive as you open up your heart and your life to Jesus Christ and make him the Lord and Saviour of your life today. That's why Christians celebrate today, Easter Sunday. Do you know on Good Friday, and Lydia shared some thoughts on that which went on our Facebook Live, but on Good Friday Jesus died. And what would seem to the world that he died and that was it, that was the end of it. But today we celebrate that it wasn't the end of the story, that he rose victorious from the grave. And to just to use an analogy, if you've ever watched um, Narnia, and sin Aslan when he dies. And they think that they've won the victory. They think all those, the, the, the Snow Queen has won because Aslan is dead. But then the tomb gets broken and he comes alive. That's the same that we can celebrate as Christians what Jesus Christ did. And C.S. Lewis who wrote the Narnia Chronicles was a Christian and he wrote that. And Aslan is Jesus. He wrote that for to tell the story of Jesus Christ. As Wednesday home group via messenger the last few weeks we've been studying um, the seven statements or sayings of Jesus on the cross traditionally these seven sayings are called the words of forgiveness salvation relationship abandonment distress triumph and reunion let me just give you the scripture references for them Luke 23 34 father forgive them for they know not what they do Luke 23, 43. Verily I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. John 19, 26 to 27. Woman, behold your son. He says to the disciple, behold your mother. Matthew 27, 46 and Mark 15, 34. Jesus cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? John 19, 28. I thirst. John 19.30, it is finished. And Luke 23.46, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. I want to share the gospel with you from those seven sayings. There's more in-depth theology around them. But do you know what? These seven sayings perfectly help describe God's salvation plan. Point number one, forgiveness. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Do you know, Jesus wasn't just asking the fathers to forgive the Roman soldiers who were nailing him to a tree, who were banging nails into his hands and into his feet. Those Roman soldiers who had just ripped his back open and blood was pouring from his back. He wasn't just asking for forgiveness for those Roman soldiers who were doing their job, but were doing that to an innocent man. He was saying, Father, forgive them about me and you, because it was our sin that held Jesus to the cross. It wasn't the nails. That held him there it was our sin that held him there the word of forgiveness do you know Jesus offers forgiveness for our sins 
It was our sin, as I said, that held him there. It was his love for us that ran red. His blood ran red down the cross for us. His blood shed, his body broken. At the start of it all, it was a message of forgiveness. No matter what you've done, no matter what your sin is, no matter what you think is so terrible that God won't forgive, I can tell you today that Jesus Christ will forgive you. Why? Because that's who he is. That's in his nature. That's his very nature is forgiveness. Do you know forgiveness is something that we can't earn? And it's something we don't deserve, yet Jesus freely gives it. Now that's not to excuse and use that as an excuse to go and keep on sinning. God calls us to be holy, but he forgives us. The Bible says it's that sin that separates us from God. Jesus will forgive us our sins if we humble ourselves and repent. And repentance means to turn away 180 degrees from turning into walking in the way of the world and turning to God and walking in his way. So the start of the gospel message for you today is this. Jesus loves you and he will forgive you. The second point, and I'm going to try and go through these as quickly as I can. The second point is salvation. Today you'll be with me in paradise. The word of salvation. According to Luke's gospel, Jesus was crucified between two thieves. One of whom supported Jesus' innocence. The other one just didn't support him at all. Told him to get off the cross if he was who he said he was. And Jesus replies, truly I say to you that you will be with me. And this is the only time that the word paradise is used in the Gospels. Today you'll be with me in paradise. Salvation belongs to Jesus Christ alone. It's because of him and through him that we are saved. The Bible says that the gospel of Jesus is the power of God unto salvation. The saviour is the only one who could administer salvation. Jesus came with salvation as his mandate to jump on the Christmas theme quickly. If you turn quickly into Luke's gospel, Luke 2, 25 to 32. If you don't have time to read it now, that's fine. Go back and read it a bit later. But we talk, we're coming to a point where Jesus is presented to the temple as a baby. And it says this, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it was been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord Christ or Messiah. So he came by the Spirit into the temple. The Holy Spirit led him into the temple. At the right time, Jesus Christ was being presented to the temple. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you're letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and glory to your people Israel. What an amazing saviour we serve. What an amazing God who would show an old man before he was to die at birth the salvation plan. And it was there right in front of him, a little baby. But he grew up to be a man and Jesus talked about it himself in John 3, 14 to 17. He was talking and he said these words, as Moses is lifted up, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the son of man must be lifted up. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Jesus dropping in to a conversation with a religious leader called Nicodemus about God's salvation plan. Verse 14, Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness and the people were healed of their sicknesses. Jesus said the Son of Man must be lifted up, lifted up upon a cross. Verse 17, that the world through him might be saved. To be saved, you need a saviour, and his name is Jesus. He's the only one qualified to do it. He's the only one worthy of that name. He's the only one able to live up to that name. The gospel message for you is that Jesus is the saviour of the world, and he is willing and able today to become your Lord and saviour, if you ask him. 
The third point, relationship. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. After that, he said to the disciples, Son, behold your mother. From that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. The statement is traditionally called the word of relationship. And in that, Jesus entrusts Mary, into his mother, into the care of of the disciple whom he loved. I love this quote from Adam Hamilton, who said this, his interpretation of that scripture I've just read. Jesus looked down from the cross to see his mother standing nearby. As far as we know, only one of the 12 disciples was there at the foot of the cross. The disciple whom Jesus loved, usually identified as John, naked and in horrible pain, he thought not of himself, but was concerned for the well-being of his mother after his death. This shows Jesus' humanity and the depth of love he had for his mother and the disciple into whose care he entrusted her. Do you know the gospel is about relationship, not religion. I preached the message last week and I shared what the gospel is and what religion is and how they are pillars apart. Jesus died on the cross that we might receive him as Lord and Saviour. As a result, we become adopted into God's family. And we have the ability to call Father God, Abba, Father. Galatians 4 verse 6 says, Because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. The gospel message is about a life changing relationship with Jesus. It's not just for a moment and oh, I don't want it anymore. It's about you giving your life to him and surrendering your life to him and him changing you from glory to glory. It's about a relationship with him and allowing him to be Lord and Saviour. I remember my first pastor saying this phrase that he picked up from someone. If he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. You can't be in and out of the kingdom of God. I preached on the kingdom of God a couple of weeks ago. You can't be in and out. Either you're in or you're not. And one of the blessings, one of the benefits we have of being sons of God and daughters of God is that we can call our heavenly father, father God. We can call him father. The God of all the universe. The God who created the stars and the skies and everything in him. We can call him father. For me, growing up with not really knowing my natural biological father, for having a really strained relationship with my stepfather growing up, being able to call Father God, Father, means so much to me. It fills me with joy, it fills me with peace, it fills me with purpose, it fills me with passion for one who sent his son for me, that he would want me to be adopted into his family. The gospel message is about Jesus wanting a relationship with you and that you would abide in him and his promises that he will abide in you. Point four, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The statement of abandonment. Matthew 27, Mark 15, we find those powerful words. I remember really digging into those words when I was in America um, doing some ministry training years ago now but I remember doing a, 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 a play doing a, 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 a drama and someone being Jesus and speaking those words Eli Eli Lama Sabatani crying out to God crying out to God my God my God why have you forsaken me Jesus was quoting Psalm 22 Verse 1, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from my words of my groaning? If you get a chance to read the rest of that psalm, read it. But read it in the context of today. Read it in the context of Friday, what happened to Jesus. Because you'll see it's the Easter story being unfolded right in front of your eyes. We read about the Messiah. We read about what Jesus experienced. Jesus was forsaken by the Father. So he could faithfully say and promise 
us that we will never be forsaken by him. The end of Matthew 28 verse 20, Jesus says, I am with you always, even till the end of the age. Because he was forsaken by God, it means that we will be never forsaken by God. It means that because Jesus experienced God turning his face away from him because the sins of, of us, of mankind, were placed on Jesus, that the wrath of God was poured out upon him, that the Father had to turn his face away because he couldn't see him anymore. He was forsaken. Imagine God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit being in perfect unity for all eternity because they live outside of time. They're not bound by time. And all of a sudden that relationship broken and ended because sin was upon Jesus. The Holy One, the one that had never sinned, all of our sin was placed upon him. And God poured out his punishment upon him and he turned his back. He turned his face away. He was forsaken by God. Why? Because we would never ever be forsaken because Jesus took that for us he will not abandon or desert us he is always with us through high times through low times through good times through bad times he is faithful the gospel message is to you that you will never be forsaken he was forsaken for you and for me he was abandoned and deserted God turned his eyes away from his beloved son so Jesus would take the punishment of sin and death in our place the bible says that for the wages of sin is death jesus paid that price point number five i thirst he said i thirst this statement is traditionally called the word of distress and as i've just said that i thirst it's compared and contrasted with the encounter of jesus with a samaritan woman at the well in John 4 4 to 26 as in the other accounts the gospel of John says Jesus was offered a drink of sour wine adding this person placed a sponge dipped in wine on a hyssop branch and held it to Jesus's lips hyssop branches had figured significantly in the Old Testament and in the book of Hebrews this statement of Jesus is interpreted by John as the fulfillment of the prophecy given in Psalm 69 verse 21 Hence the quotation from, God, from John's Gospel includes the comment to fulfil the scriptures. Psalm 69, 21 says, They also gave me gall for my food, and my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Jesus knew distress. He knew anguish. Jesus went through everything and experienced everything that we could possibly go through, so he would have compassion for us. You might be going through distress, worry or anguish right now. Do you know, Jesus cares for you. He knows your pain. He not only suffered the physical pain of the execution on the cross, but he endured the spiritual anguish of pain and distress of the Father pouring out the wrath of God upon him. The gospel message for you today is that Jesus suffered the greatest distress imaginable, so you won't have to. Jesus took the punishment of sin and paid the price. But you know, the irony is, and the most heartbreaking and painful news is that people will still suffer that punishment when they don't have to the price has been paid and it's been paid in full that's why Jesus is called the redeemer because he has redeemed us he's paid the price we need to accept what he's done for us point number six it is finished Jesus said it is finished three simple words but had massive impact for us the statement is traditionally called the word of triumph and is theologically interpreted as the announcement of the end of the earthly life of Jesus and the anticipation of the resurrection which we're celebrating today Adam Hamilton again writes the last words are seen as a cry of victory not of dereliction Jesus had now completed what he came to do a plan was fulfilled a salvation was made possible a love shown he had taken our place. He had demonstrated both humanity's brokenness and God's love. He had offered himself fully to God as a sacrifice on behalf of humanity. As he died, it was finished. With these words, the noblest person who ever walked the face of this planet, God in the flesh, breathed his last. When Jesus cried, it is finished. He declared victory over Satan, the enemy. When he cried, it is finished, he declared victory over sin. 
When he cried, it is finished, he declared victory over shame, over addiction, over sickness, over disease, over heartbreak. He declared victory over everything. John 16, 33. Jesus says these words. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Only somebody who's overcome the world, who has victory, can say, it is finished. Jesus has overcome the world, and we can overcome the world too. In Revelation 12, verse 11, the Bible says that they overcame him, meaning the enemy, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. The gospel message for you today is this, Jesus Christ has overcome the world. And if you are in him, you will overcome. He is triumphant. He is undefeated. He's always on the winning side. What side are you on today? My final point from these seven statements. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Luke 23, 46. Jesus again quoting from one of the Psalms. Psalm 31 verse 5. Known as the word of reunion. Theologically interpreted as the proclamation of Jesus joining the Father in heaven. Hamilton again writes, When darkness seemed to prevail in life, it takes faith even to talk to God, even if it is to complain to him. These last words of Jesus from the cross show his absolute trust in God. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. This has been termed a model prayer for everyone when afraid, sick or facing one's own death. It says in effect, I commit myself to you, O God, in my living and in my dying, in the good times and in the bad, wherever I am, whatever I, I have, I place in your hands, O God, for your safe keeping. What a reunion they must have had. But what a reunion party awaits in heaven for us when we, his church, his bride, will join him one day, as the Bible says. The gospel message for you today is simply this. Where are you going to spend eternity? With Jesus or without him? Where are you going to spend eternity? I mentioned last week that one of my favourite chapters in the Bible is John 11. And I want us to read just a couple of verses from that scripture. John eleven twenty five to 27. Jesus says to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes, she said to him. Lord, I believe you are the Christ, the son of God who has come into the world. Today, millions, if not billions of people around the world are celebrating Easter Sunday. We celebrate today because Jesus was absolutely right and spot on what he said to Lazarus' sister. He is the resurrection and the life. He proclaimed it. He believed it. He lived it out himself. He not only raised Lazarus from the dead, but three days after dying, he was raised to life to prove that he has conquered the grave. He has conquered death. He has the victory. The tomb is empty. Jesus is alive. I want to invite you today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, to say this simple prayer after me. I've explained the gospel to you in seven points, but I can bring it down to four. The Bible says that God loves you. The Bible says that sin separates us from God and we've all sinned, we've all fallen short. Of the glory of God. On Friday we celebrated. It's called Good Friday because Jesus died and paid the price. But he rose again victorious. Today we celebrate that. The fourth point is. What are you going to do with that? The Bible says that today is a day of salvation. So I want to pray a prayer. If you want to pray that prayer with me. Then please pray after me. Dear Lord Jesus. I thank you. That you died in my place. I thank you, Lord, that you took my sin and my shame. Lord, I repent of my sin 
and ask for your forgiveness. Would you come into my life? I make you Lord and Saviour. Help me by your Holy Spirit to be the person you want me to be, to be the child of God you've intended me to be. I want to live for you for the rest of my days. In your precious name. Amen. If you have prayed that prayer, please get in contact with us. We'd love to know and we'd love to support you and help you. If you want to just write a testimony, if that, of, of what you've just done, then send it into our email, prayer.thestorehouse at gmail.com. We're going to take communion together now. We're going to take the bread and the wine. We celebrated on Good Friday. But the Bible says, as often as you come, as often as you meet together, do this in remembrance of me until I return. Because then we won't have to take communion anymore. But we're going to take communion now. We're going to remember again the sacrifice that he made. His body broken for us. His blood shed for us. Blood of the new covenant. To make a way to salvation. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you for the cross, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your body broken for us. Lord, we remember the sacrifice you made. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for the blood. The blood that still washes us clean. The blood that still has power today to set the captive free. We thank you that your blood was shed for us, Lord, that your love ran red for us. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for joining us on our Easter Sunday service. We've loved spending time with you. And we'd ask that you would share this video with your friends. If you'd like our page so you get notifications when we're doing our live videos again. And we look forward to seeing you next week in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.